the uh, AirSide software, uh, you know, one of the focuses between AirSide and AirSide Pro is to allow us to properly plan for the aircraft parking and servicing operations within airport terminals, either at contact stands or non-contact stands where we may be bus loading. So in this case, when we have aircraft parked along the lead-in line and we've done a proper connection with the passenger boarding bridge to the terminal and we verified slopes, there's secondary type constraints that we might want to consider for things like fueling pits on the stand that need to have a fixed operating distance between the connection on the ground to the pressure fueling location on the aircraft. And so we can use uh, the symbols that we see here for the connection point in the very center of the gray circle and the limit that we will allow the hose to travel to in the outer. And in the magenta circle smaller on the aircraft wing, that's the pressure fueling location. So with that one aircraft, we can see that we can make a connection but utilizing some of the power and AVI plan to go out and select additional aircraft that will be serviced at that stand, either individually or from a group, and potentially setting some preferences or docking rules on whether or not we're connecting these to door one or door two by priority, we can then fit a number of aircraft in the stand and look through our list of results for anything color-coded that is indicating that we have a priority. Red obviously being a critical issue, yellow being a softer uh, warning where you may be able to uh, operate, but you're getting close to a limit. So with the aircraft that does have an issue in this case, the fueling is outside of the desirable service range. So if we wanted to move the aircraft forward by itself, we can select it independently and we should be able to drag the aircraft to get it into the operational range of the hydrant, thus fixing the critical problem that was presented. Now this is a function of Abbey Plan's uh, airplane parking, whether or not we're allowing the position to be automatic or user defined, but certainly in this case, once we manually drag and adjust, we can move it. And if you're in that early greenfield type situation where the planning is early, and the positions of things like the hydrants can be moved, and certainly you can look for an optimal location and move the hydrant later to satisfy an issue. A lot of the work we do is with existing facilities where we may not have carte blanche to go through and lay things out uh, to, to accommodate by moving those fixed installations. Uh, so at that point, then we may be looking at some special secondary operations like tanker fueling. Once we get done with that, certainly the animation is one thing that shows what's going on here on the design standpoint, but the reporting that comes out of the software provides us with what should be a comprehensive list of what equipment is going to be accommodated and certainly the color warnings carry into the report for any of the concerns that we may have regarding the um, limits that we might be moving things through. Then under the draw properties uh, for the stand, there is the ability to go through and quickly change what we are displaying between 2D and 3D or to draw other types of service arrangements or uh, safety clearance boxes. So it's not a very uh, difficult process for CAD users to be able to, in the pro versions of Aviplan Turn Pro or Airside Pro, convert their 2D sessions to 3D if they have been working with uh, equipment that has the available models. Uh, when a terrain is brought in with this, again, as well too, as we said, the wheels of this aircraft will remain upon the surface and the ground vehicles, so we get true elevations for all of the positions. <laughs> 